And then we can look at reactions of Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. So you can take something that's a Bronsted Lowry acid, like acetic acid, and react it with some kind of a base, like a thoxide. We'll write an equilibrium arrow. We'll have to determine which way this will go, and that will come up a little bit later. To the carboxylate, that one's called acetate, plus the alcohol, it's ethanol. So if I look at a reaction of a bronsted lowry acid and base, so I have some kind of an acid, and I have some kind of a base, and they're going to react. Remember, the acid wants to give up its proton, and the base wants to gain a proton. So this is going to lose H+, plus. this one's going to gain H+. Plus. All right, so now if I look over here, I have my acetic acid that I started with, minus H+, plus. and if I look over here, I have my alkoxide, or ethoxide that I started with, with an extra H+. Plus. So when I look at these pairs, I start with an acid here, and this one, if you look at it, it's got a negative charge now. This is the base, but we call this the conjugate base. of the starting acid. So acetic acid is the starting acid, acetate is the conjugate base of that acid. Then we have the base that we started with, that once that gets protonated over here, now I have an acid, and this one is the conjugate acid, of the starting base. So I started with this base, we add a proton to it, now it becomes an acid. If this reaction were to go in reverse, we could say that we have an acid here, and this is a base, and if this acid is deprotonated, it would go over here, and this would be the conjugate base of this acid, ethanol, and if I have this base and protonate it, I would get this acid, so then this one would be the conjugate acid. Of this base acetate. This idea of acid base and conjugate acid and conjugate base uh, will be an important one and one that uh, that I would expect people to know for exams. The next concept is acid strength and pKa and this is really the most vital concept out of this whole chapter uh, in fact, I'll be talking about pKa's throughout the entire year of organic chemistry. Uh, pKa's and under understanding pKa's of different of different types of molecules will help you understand a huge amount of organic chemical mechanisms, and this is why this is one of the, the vital areas, one of the five most important areas to understand, so that you don't have to memorize everything in organic chemistry, but you can determine a lot of stuff. Um, based on pKa's. So what is acid strength and how does it relate to pKa's? So if we're going to look first at acid strength, it really means how readily will a molecule donate its proton. So we can look at a generic reaction and the generic reaction we usually say is HA, where H is the proton and A is just whatever the conjugate base is. HA will separate then to H plus and A minus. Okay, so that's just a standard reaction. We can write the Ka of that reaction, or the acidity constant, as equaling the products H plus times A minus. over HA. And hopefully you remember that from general chemistry as well. All that is is an equilibrium constant, K. It's the equilibrium constant for an acid dissociation. That's why it's a Ka. 
And if you think about it carefully, if Ka is greater than one, what does that mean? If Ka is greater than one, that means that this numerator is higher than the denominator, that the h plus times the a minus is higher. Since there's more h plus and a minus, that means that the ha is more dissociated than it is together, and it favors products. Now, if Ka is less than 1, that means that we have more Ha around, right? The denominator is greater than the numerator, right? So we have more Ha around, that means that it's less dissociated, it's more still together, and that would favor reactants. So then a higher Ka is more dissociated, that makes it a stronger acid. In this case, a lower Ka, less dissociated, means a weaker acid. Chemists use pKa a lot more often than they'll use Ka, however. Uh, and I like to say it's because we're simple. Everyone thinks that chemists are these really brilliant people, but I we like simple numbers, right? We don't want tons of crazy exponents. We want things to be simple, and so we'll use a pKa instead. So if you remember, just like with pH, pKa equals the minus log of Ka. Just like pH that you learned in Gen Chem equals the minus log of the H plus concentration. So it has the same idea. So it's a log scale. So let's see what happens and see how pKa will relate to Ka. So if I have a Ka that equals 1 times 10 to the 7. 1 times 10 to the 7. So remember what that means. That means that the concentration of H plus and A minus is 1 times 10 to the 7 greater than the concentration of HA. 1 times 10 to the 7 times greater, right? So it's like writing this as 1 times 10 to the 7 over 1. That would be H plus and A minus over HA. So that's a strong acid, right? It's, it's very, very much dissociated. The pKa of that then equals minus 7. If the Ka is 10, so it's more dissociated than not, but only by a factor of 10. pKa then is minus one. If it's not dissociated nearly as much, maybe it's only dissociated 1.0 times 10 to the minus four. The pKa of that then equals four. So now you notice we went from negatives. Negatives were ones that were much more dissociated than they are together. Okay, so those are our very, very strong acids, our negatives. When we get into organic acids, a lot of times a pKa of 4 will still consider reasonably acidic, even though if you think of this as 1 times 10 to the minus 4 over 1, or if you like, another way to write that is you could write that as 1 over 10,000. So now it's mostly together still. Right? We only have one molecule that's dissociated for every 10,000 that are still together. Yet in organic chemistry terms, we would still consider that reasonably acidic. It's not a strong acid, uh, it's going to be a weaker acid, but it will still be reasonably acidic. Then we can continue. Ka equals 1 times 10 to the minus 28. And if Ka is 1 times 10 to the minus 28, and then pKa equals 28, and we will see molecules like this, uh, alkanes for example, where it's more like 1 times 10 to the minus 50. And then the pKa equals 50. So this type of a proton, in this case, really, really, really doesn't want to come off. It's very, very hard to remove that kind of a proton because it's not acidic at all. Minus 7, extremely acidic. pKa of 50 
is very not acidic. And if you want to compare these, one thing that's really important to think about is since it's a log scale, okay, somebody might compare two acids, one with a pKa of minus 7 and one with a pKa of minus 1. So how much more acidic is one than the other? And the typical wrong answer that you'll hear people say is that, well, this one is seven times more acidic than this one, or six times more acidic, because, because of the difference from minus one to minus seven. It's actually 10 to the six times more acidic, or one million times more acidic. That's what happens when you have a log scale. So that's something to keep in mind with, with differences in pKa's between in certain groups, is that a difference of, of several units, like a difference of six or 10 or something like that, is really a huge difference because it's on the order of a log scale. So you're, each difference of one is a factor of 10. So now we need to consider what happens with pKa and acidity. So the smaller the pKa, the stronger the acid we're going to have, because it's something that more readily gives up its proton. Or more readily dissociates.